how does the brain do it, right? Like we're throwing way more data at these LLMs and they still have a small fraction of the total capabilities that a human does. So what's going on? Yeah, I mean, this might be the quadrillion dollar question <laughs> or something like that. It's, it's, it's arguably, you could make an argument this is the most important you know, question in science. I don't claim to know the answer. I, I also don't really think that the answer will necessarily come even from a lot of smart people thinking about it as much as they are. I, my, my overall like meta level take is that we have to empower the field of neuroscience to just make neuroscience a, a more powerful uh, field technologically and otherwise to actually be able to crack a question like this. But maybe the, the way that we would think about this now with like, like modern AI, neural nets, deep learning, is that there are sort of these, these cer certain key components of that. There's the architecture, um, there's maybe hyperparameters of the architecture. How many layers do you have or sort of properties of that architecture? There is the learning algorithm itself. How do you train it? You know, backprop, gradient descent. Um, is it something else? There is, how is it initialized? Okay, so if we take the learning part of the system, it still may have some initialization of, of the weights. Um, and then there are also cost functions. There's like, what is it being trained to do? Yeah. What's the reward signal? What are the loss functions, supervision signals? My personal hunch within that framework is that the, the field has neglected uh, the role of this very specific loss functions, very specific cost functions. Uh, machine learning tends to like mathematically simple loss functions, right? Predict the next token. Um, you know, cross entropy, the, you know, these, right. these 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 uh, simple kind of computer scientist loss functions. I think evolution may have built a lot of complexity into the loss functions. Actually, many different loss functions were different areas turned on at different stages of development. A lot of Python code, basically, uh, generating. Uh, a specific curriculum for what different parts of the brain need to learn. Because evolution has seen many times what was successful and unsuccessful, and evolution could encode the knowledge of of the learning curriculum. So so in the in the machine learning framework, maybe we can come back and we can talk about, yeah, where do the loss functions of the brain come from? Can that can loss different loss functions lead to different efficiency of learning? You know, people say like the cortex has got the universal human learning algorithm, the special sauce right, that humans right. have. What's up well, with this that? is a huge question, uh, and we don't know. I've seen models where what the cortex, uh, you know, the cortex has typically this like six layered structure, layers yeah. in a slightly different sense than layers of a neural net. Yeah. It's like any one location in the cortex has six physical layers of tissue as you go in layers of the sheet. And then those areas then connect to each other, and that's more like the layers of a network. Um, I've seen versions of that where what you're trying to explain is actually just how does it approximate backprop. Yeah. And what is the cost function for that? What is the network being asked you to do? If you sort of are trying to say it's something like backprop, is it doing backprop on next token prediction? Or is it doing backprop right. on exactly. uh, classifying images? Or, or what is it doing? Um, and uh, no one no one knows. <laughs> um, but I think I think one one thought about it, one possibility about it is that um, it's just this incredibly general um, prediction engine. So, so any one area of cortex is just trying to predict any, basically can it learn to predict any subset of all the variables it sees from any other subset. So like omnidirectional inference um, or omnidirectional prediction. Um, whereas an LLM is just, you see everything in the context window and then it, it computes a very particular yeah. conditional probability, which is given all the last thousands of things, what is the very probabilities for all the all the the next token? Yeah. Um, but it would be weird for a large language model to say, you know, um, you know, the quick brown fox, blank, blank, the lazy dog, um, and fill in, in the middle. Yeah. Um, uh, versus do the next token. It, it, it if it's if it's doing just forward. It can learn how to do that stuff in this emergent level of in context learning, but natively it's just predicting the next token. Yeah. What if the cortex is just natively made so that it can, you know, any area of cortex can predict any pattern in any subset of its inputs given any other missing subset? Um, that is a little bit more like quote unquote probabilistic AI. Um, I think a lot of the things I'm saying, by the way, are extremely similar to like what Jan LeCun would say. Yeah, um, he's really interested in these energy-based models, um, and something like that is like the joint distribution of all the variables. What is the what is the likelihood or unlikelihood of just any combination of variables? And if I if I clamp some of them, I say, well, definitely these variables are in these states. 
then I can compute with probabilistic sampling, for example, I can compute, okay, conditioned on these being set in this state, what are, and these could be any arbitrary subset of, of, of variables in the model. Uh, can I predict what any other subset is going to do and sample from any other subset given clamping this subset? And I could choose a totally different subset and sample from that subset. Um, so it's omnidirectional inference. And so, it, you know, it, that could be there's some parts of air, of cortex that might be like association areas of cortex that may, you know, predict vision from audition. Yeah. There might be areas that predict things that the more innate part of the brain is going to do. Because remember, this whole thing is basically riding on top of the sort of a lizard brain and lizard body, if you will. Um, and that thing is a thing that's worth predicting, too. So you're not just predicting, do I see this or do I see that? But I, is this muscle about to tense? Am I about to have a reflex where I laugh? You know, is my heart rate about to go up? If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.